Right, so in this video, I'm going to um, explain to you the uh, personality theory from humanistic approach. And this, this video will be divided into three different uh, parts. So the first part would be, I'm going to explain to you the uh, rationale of the theory, as well as the uh, basic premises of the theory itself. And the second part would be more um, concerned on uh, explaining what uh, self-actualization actually means, which I will explain later. And the last part would be the, um, the current um, development of the theory itself. So, the, so uh, for this um, um, uh, theory, this approach is significantly different from the previous approach that you have learned from the previous, uh, from the previous um, um, videos. Uh, so the humanistic approach uh, came out as a critic to psychoanalysis and also a more be behavioral uh, approach in psychology. Uh, so they had a lot of disagreements with the with the basic concept of psychoanalysis. Uh, as the psychoanalysis, uh, most psychoanalysts, they viewed a human as a more passive form. Uh, so the human would be only an outcome of of uh, their instinctual drives uh, which not appeal to every uh, which not appeal uh, to everyone so this approach uh, prefer to explain human as as a more active form and human would have power to uh, to determine their own fate and even regulating their own behavior so it's a bit more is a bit more uh, optimistic than uh, psychoanalysis uh, theory, uh, but uh, some of it would be uh, quite helpful in um, in improving ourselves uh, because they have uh, they they emphasize the importance of personal growth, uh, which I will explain uh, in a more uh, detailed manner uh, later. Um, and the uh, the humanistic approach, the one of the most prominent. A figure in this uh, in this movement is uh, Abraham Maslow, uh, and he's an American. He's very famous even outside psychology, um, and he is very famous of proposing uh, the hierarchical needs of the, the the pyramid of needs, which I also explain later what it means and how it actually works uh, in in explaining human needs. Uh, so uh, these theory is extremely popular as I, as I have uh, told you before uh, so basically this theory comprises the idea that uh, our motivation our needs yeah our needs uh, is innate uh, again it, this is quite similar to psychoanalysis that uh, that under, that understand that propose that human uh, that basic needs that the needs itself is also innate but the nature of these needs uh, are are fundamentally different from uh, from the psychoanalysis view. Uh, but uh, to some extent, Maslow agrees agreed that uh, human needs again it's innate, it's hereditary, it is something that already within us, and it could activate and also direct our behavior. So it works uh, almost likely uh, like motivation. So needs, uh, sometimes uh, Maslow use needs and motivation interchangeably. And those needs uh, are, the first one would be the physiological needs. So it concerns on uh, our physical needs that, uh, that, we, that we require to survive as a human being. And the second layer would be uh, the safety, uh, safety needs, uh, safety, uh, safety needs, and also the third layer would be belongingness and love. Yeah, so this these needs would concern on uh, our uh, demand to relate on other people, to relate with other people, and the next one would be uh, self-esteem needs, and the third uh, and the last one, the fifth uh, needs. Uh, that we will discuss in a more uh, detailed manner uh, later is that the self-actualization needs. And again, uh, Maslow uh, later uh, Maslow uh, proposed that the that those needs are uh, fundamentally instinctual. So it's uh, there are lots of hereditary component to it. So no matter uh, there is no um, so he did not 
say cultural or or um, or a cultural or maybe social um, background into account. So regardless of one's uh, cultural or social background, the needs would always remain the same. Uh, so the characteristic of these needs uh, is a range. Uh, th they are arranged as a hierarchy, which means that they have um, uh, they have an order. Yeah. So it was ordered. Uh, it is or uh, those are ordered uh, from the strongest at uh, at the bottom of the hierarchy, and also the weakest uh, sits at the top of the hierarchy, which means that. Uh, the stronger need, the strongest need, the the uh, the most uh, prioritized to be fulfilled need would be uh, the bottom, the first uh, needs that is the physiological needs, which is very makes sense. And the lower needs should be uh, uh, at least partially satisfied before proceeding to the uh, higher needs. And the higher needs would be only be, would be uh, only become influential if the lower needs at least partially uh, partially uh, uh, fulfilled. Um, and again, uh, the theory says that uh, we are not driven by all needs at the same time. At least at the f uh, each or specific stage in our lives, uh, one specific need would be more would be more influential than the another. And in general, only one need will dominate our personality at one point at a time. So, again, uh, there is only one need in one specific period of time that become more influential than other needs. And even some needs will only appear later in life. Yes, uh, but some needs would uh, would appear uh, as the early as the uh, as the infancy. So this this is the uh, f the visual uh, uh, so the visual representation of the hierarchy of needs uh, from uh, Abraham Maslow. Uh, so the bottom in at the bottom of the of the hierarchy is the uh, uh, physiological needs, which is the strongest. And also the most uh, prioritized needs that needs to be fulfilled immediately, and it appear uh, very early in our life. Um, but the at the top of the hierarchy is the self actualization, which I will explain what it is later. Um, and these needs, the self actualization, uh, would only appear uh, very late, uh, very late in our life. So it uh, it is around. Uh, in our um, midlife, instead, in a, in a, uh, in adulthood, in the yes, in an adulthood. Um, but yeah, before we proceeding to the next topic, um, there is a fun fact that uh, Maslow never actually proposed. Uh, uh, he did propose the hierarchical model of needs. But he never actually used the pyramids as the visual representation of his theory. So uh, the pyramid form of of his theory is a more like a more popular form, and it was not. It didn't come from him, but it come. It came from someone else. Yeah. So this is a, a historical glitch from the theory, even though uh, the the pyramid form of this hierarchical needs is extremely popular, even outside psychology will recognize this theory in a pyramid form. But in fact, uh, Maslow himself, he never actually proposed uh, his theory of hierarchical needs uh, in a pyramid form. And um, there are some characteristics that you m might need to know about those needs. Um, so again, the lower, at the lowest uh, position at the hierarchy, um, the 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 strength of the need is the is the highest is the strongest and it has a highest potency and even the priority so the the bottom of the the lower needs at the bottom of the hierarchy needs to be fulfilled and satisfied immediately but higher needs would only appear later in life yeah so um uh, in theory he said that uh, physiological and safety needs again it arise as early as infancy 
And we could also relate this hypothesis to how uh, Karen Horney, the, from the previous um, uh, from the previous uh, video, um, she said uh, basically the same thing that uh, that um, in the in the childhood uh, stage, um, the most prominent needs that needs to be fulfilled by the parents is the need to be. Uh, the need to be safe, um, so safety needs would be also uh, appear very early in our lives. And the next uh, stage in the hierarchy, the next uh, the next needs is uh, those are belongingness, love and belongingness, and also self esteem. Uh, it also it arises in adolescence, and then um, in the mid uh, in the midlife in the uh, Late, uh, not late adult, uh, maybe in the uh, middle adulthood, uh, the self actualization then appeared at that stage. And some characteristics of those needs also include uh, if you, if someone uh, fail, you, uh, uh, if they fail to uh, to satisfy the higher needs, uh, it won't it won't cause a lot of problems or crisis. But if one fails to satisfy their lower needs, it would uh, definitely produce a crisis. So that's why the lower needs would always be uh, prioritized to be satisfied first. But the uh, but the the failure to satisfy the higher uh, higher uh, needs in the hierarchy would not uh, be uh, would not cause a problem. So yeah, because n not everyone would. Uh, would uh, arrive at that stage, would arrive in that needs. So it doesn't have to be always uh, fulfilled. But the lower needs, it it, it certainly has to be uh, fulfilled immediately. And for this reason, of course, Maslow says that uh, the lower needs, uh, he also mentioned the lower needs is, al is also called uh, deficit or deficiency needs, which means that it always, uh, it always, um, uh, it, it, it always uh, needs to be fulfilled because if it's not uh, fulfilled, then it will produce a deficit, a deficiency to the, to the personality. And even though the higher uh, needs at the hierarchy uh, is less, uh, are less important than the lower part of the hierarchy, but again, the top part, the, the higher part of the hierarchy are also very important for our personal growth. This is uh, where uh, Maslow um, gave uh, his focus on explaining why human growth, personal growth, is extremely important for one's uh, personality. And if someone uh, is, a sec is successful to fulfill those higher needs at the hierarchy, it will lead to a lot of positive outcomes, such as improved health. Uh, it leads to happiness as well, contentment, fulfillment, and also longevity, which means that even though it's less important, if you want to have a more meaningful and uh, satisfied life, then you need to, then we need to uh, uh, satisfy those needs that, uh, that are at the uh, higher part of the hierarchy. So that's why at the uh, higher part of the hierarchy, he uh, he also uh, called those needs as uh, growth or being needs. Yeah. And what makes fulfilling uh, needs that are at the higher part of the hierarchy is typical, uh, different from the lower part of the hierarchy, is that if we want to satisfy the higher part of the of the hierarchy, it requires us more resources, it requires more um, social, economic, and even political circumstances that support us to fulfill those needs, which means a lot of effort, a lot of end for to, to satisfy those needs so that not everyone are successful to fulfill those higher needs. For example, if, you, if we want to pursue uh, the self-actualization needs that sits at the top of the hierarchy, uh, which it means that we require uh, a lot of uh, freedom of expression and opportunity. Then, for example, if you if you want to chase for 
uh, lower parts of the uh, of the hierarchy that is perhaps safety or even physiological needs so i think that's quite clear that um, self actualization is not for everyone because it requires a lot of resources right so again so every needs at the hierarchy it doesn't have to be fulfilled uh, completely uh, even partially uh, satisfied those needs are sometimes quite uh, quite uh, appropriate already uh, and even Maslow himself he proposed a declining percentage uh, of satisfaction for each needs so for example for physiological needs you don't have to fulfill that 100% of the time uh, by fulfilling it 85% it should be considered enough and for safety needs it only needs to be fulfilled like 70% for the t of the time and at the top and after that after safety needs then uh, the needs to of belongingness and love it it, it needs only to be fulfilled like 50% of the time and for self esteem needs then it only requires 40% then self actualization it only requires like 10% of our time so um, again uh, it doesn't have to be fulfilled completely before proceeding to the next uh, needs so yeah that would be the idea so um, the next uh, this is the end of the first section of this lecture so um, for the next video I'm going to explain to you the uh, the idea of self-actualization, what it actually means, and who is the self, uh, who is the person who is successful to achieve uh, self-actualization.